An excessive heat warning for the cities of Washington and Baltimore. The National Weather Service puts this excessive heat warning out. We've had two or more days of heat indices of 105 or higher. Traffic on the one in Downey, 105 eastbound, just past Lakewood Boulevard. It's a car that... Gary is expected to become a hurricane prior to landfall. And we do expect a landfall to be somewhere in the western Florida panhandle. They saw daddy uh, drinking beer, uh, and now in the hall, uh, their heart uh, have come in. Skateboarding saved my life. It gave me a creative outlet, and in turn, self-respect and hope. In my youth, the spirit of riding a skateboard was all about individuality, and to me, such a message made a difference, empowering me with a very physical, yet productive form of self-expression. These days, I can't help but feel that the brand of skateboarding that most people are being sold on is truly lacking of spirit, of soul. It's all hype, it's all show. I'm concerned by how self-consumed and competitive this industry has become. I can't believe that this is the same activity, the same industry, that profoundly and positively affected my life as a teenager. For me, it never was and never will be about any of those things. I still believe that skateboarding can and should be a positive experience. And as a professional, I feel it's my duty to give back all that it has given to me. The shortcomings of this industry only motivate me to work harder, to be more visible and vocal, to be in more places and to reach more people. They can kill the true meaning of skateboarding on a commercial level, but they'll never kill it at the core, or in the hearts of those to whom skateboarding means so much more. My career as a sponsored skater began in 1986 at Mount Trashmore Park in Virginia Beach, Virginia, when I was discovered skating in the parking lot by one of my skateboard heroes, Lance Mountain. On a Thursday afternoon, I was skating with some of my buddies uh, in town at one of their houses. We were skating in the driveway. And uh, I said, you know what, man, it's Thursday. I bet you some of the pros are in town over at Trashmore practicing right now. Everyone's like, yeah, you know, they might be, they might be. So we hopped in the car and we drove over, parked in the lot, came up, sat down at the bleachers and watched the guys skate in the vert ramp, which used to be out there. We watched them skate for a bit, but we were so excited, so freaked out that it was that it was happening. We couldn't contain ourselves, so we got off our asses off the bleachers, walked over here, and right about here, we started skating ourselves. Just doing hand plants, and uh, I did a ho-ho plant right here, and I heard this clapping coming from the vert ramp, just this slow kind of... And I look back and I see Neil Blender standing on top of the vert ramp, clapping his hands like this, and then pointing at me. And I go, oh my God. And my buddies are like, dude, Neil Blender's pointing at you. He's clapping. I go, what do I do? What do I do? He goes, just keep skating, man. Keep skating. So I kept doing all my tricks. And uh, within a few minutes, he had taken his pads off and he started walking over here. And he came up to us and introduced himself and just started rapping with us a little bit. And, uh, asked me to do some more tricks for him, so I just kept doing tricks, and he'd, he'd start asking me, can you do this, can you do this, or show me something I haven't seen, and I just went through my whole, pretty much my whole repertoire of tricks at the time, and uh, he was laughing and clapping his hands and shaking his head like he couldn't believe what he was seeing. And uh, I didn't really understand why he was, why he was reacting this way to my skating. I figured that everything I was doing was what was being done in California or, you know, I remember saying to him, "Isn't you know? Don't aren't the guys in in Venice? Aren't the Dogtown guys doing these tricks? I mean, you know, what, what's the big deal?" And he said, "No, I've never seen anybody do these tricks. I've never seen anyone skate the way you skate." Meeting Neil would have been the greatest moment of my skateboarding life if I hadn't met Lance Mountain the next day and gotten sponsored by Pal Peralta. Having Lance uh, kind of take me in, he took me in over the weekend. Basically, he he gave me his board first of all. Um, which he just pulled up. He, my board was in such bad condition. He just couldn't believe that I was doing these tricks on this board. He couldn't believe that I was actually even skating this board at this point. 
So without even, without any hesitation, the guy just opened the trunk of his car and just pulled out a brand new skateboard and gave it to me, complete setup. And uh, that was, uh, that was probably the greatest moment of my skateboard life. My skating at Trashmore that weekend would go on to be documented in Thrasher magazine, with a cover shot serving as my introduction to the skateboard world. After talking to Lance about it several years later, it was having an original style and doing my own tricks, tricks that no one had seen before. That's what they were looking for. That is why they wanted to sponsor me. I don't like to use the word proud too much, but I am proud that I had my own thing going at an early age. Even at 16, my skating was my skating. And I am glad to say that the day I got sponsored, I came in as an individual. And that means a lot to me. I have always had heroes, from the superheroes I read about in comic books, to Elvis, to Evil Knievel, to Henry Rollins and Lance Mountain. I've always had someone to look up to or aspire to be like, a role model. Ever since I discovered punk rock music and skateboarding in 1984, one of my biggest influences in both mediums has been Minor Threat and Fugazi frontman, Ian Mackay. I was fortunate to meet Ian at his house in Washington, D.C., and to go into his home and be welcomed so warmly was amazing. I can relate to him more than just about anyone else I know. We always had a really idealistic relationship with skating, I think. We always saw it, we saw it like really clearly as like this incredibly like important like as a way of living life that gave you a chance to redefine everything around you. Like skaters don't see sidewalks as sidewalks. They don't see streets as streets. They don't see walls as walls. Everything has been redefined. Like the rest of the world all the other people in the world who don't skate see it completely different. They see that that's a place you walk, or that's a curb, or you know that you step off the curb. But skaters, it's always about like the potential, or the possibility yeah. of the of the terrain, and that's like it really, in a very weird way, it really like 
hooks up kids with the ability to redefine. Yeah. And if they can redefine that, then they can redefine anything. I'm talking about your idealistic look at, at skateboarding. You know, I read uh, your interview in Juice. I don't know who I was telling, but I, I was like, this is the best thing I've ever read about skateboarding. Like you said it, you articulated it dead on. Exactly the way that I thought it should be presented. Thanks. Exactly the way I would love to be able to present it myself. You know, <laughs> and uh, and I mean I've been trying for years. I've been trying to say the right things, right. trying to be about the right things. But I was like, man, this is like, you know, this should be like copied and distributed like right. with every skateboard. That, you know. But I actually don't have any beef with like the way people skate now either. A lot of people I know who are older skaters in, they kind of say like, oh, skaters now is just like you know, mm -hmm. all this technical stuff. But I think like. Yeah, whatever, man. It's like it's like it's all like every time someone does something technical, it can go, it may it may move into an area where everyone's being very technical. But it's eventually, some artist is going to get a hold of the technique, mm -hmm. and the artists are going to take that back and, and apply it to something new. They're going to find something, and it's just going to happen over and over and over again. So yeah. I'm always psyched that there's just people doing anything. Period. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. Ian is able to articulate better than anyone what skateboarding is really about because he's not in or consumed by the skateboard industry. He has a fresh perspective and an open mind. He remains connected to the reasons he started skating and the feelings that come with it. He talks about skating at its most fundamental and pure level, not the tricks, the brand names, or the hype, but skateboarding as an outlet and a form of self-expression. That's what I connect with. For me, skateboarding has always been that creative outlet, a physical and mental discipline, an art form. A skateboard is like a paintbrush to me, and my approach comes very natural. My skating comes from my heart, not my head. It is something I feel, not think. My skating is always about the moment, about feeling and expressing.
I feel strongly about getting out on the road and traveling around, going on tour, because that is where I know I can affect change, one town, one person at a time. To be able to get out there, to skate and relate is my goal. So if I don't do that, if I don't get in the car or on the plane, then it's just daydreams. But I'm all about making my dreams come true. So I go, and I go, and I go. I was the second professional skater to ever demo in Russia, and the first to go there in eight years. Only Rodney Mullen had been there before me, and so it was a great honor to go to St. Petersburg and be an ambassador for skateboarding. What is the brand? The brand? Yeah, black label. He's interested about how much it's got because her son is asking for um, to buy a skateboard, and I'm trying to say that there are different boards. Here in St. Peter, it could be, I don't know, uh, 150 bucks. I'm not surprised at how big skateboarding has grown worldwide. I remember quite well how right it felt to me growing up, and I think it's the same for people in Russia or Africa or Mexico. Skateboarding makes sense. The scene in Russia is still young and innocent, and I felt privileged to be able to help nurture it. That's how I looked at what I was doing there, lending to the foundation that the Russian skaters had created for themselves. I saw myself as a support column. My coming to Russia was an act of encouragement, and the best part about it all, I felt that I was effective. You like Black Label? Yes. You like the New York Rangers? Yes. All oh, right on. My kind of guy. I like skateboarding. Me too, man. Mine. Can we sign it? Right. Yes. This is still skateboarding for us. And you're not happy about it? No, I'm happy, but. Uh, I mean, to keep it in perspective, you have a place to go to skate. Yes, I do. I mean, that's important, really important. Uh, so this one, this one you don't like so much? Next time they build one, get involved and try and help out the design. You can do that. You can't get involved. You can't talk to somebody. It's, it's very simple. If you care enough about what's happening, you have to be proactive. You have to involve yourself, make it better. Everybody here has to play a role in that. You make your own skate scene what it is. If you don't like your skate scene, then you don't like yourself. Hey, you're my idol since I started skating. Oh man, what's your name? Donny Turunen. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, man. In Finland, skateboarding is growing. 
not just in the number of participants, but also in that the skaters there are maturing and opening themselves up to different aspects of skating. I have seen the expansion firsthand, and I am glad to have played a role in it. When I went there in the year 2000, most of the skaters all had the same style and trick selection, but this past year I noticed they were doing different tricks, open to hand plants and foot plants, even inventing a few variations of their own. It's all about exposure. They saw the same things over and over in the magazines and videos, so that's what they emulated. Now they are keeping it fresh and fun, and this gives me hope for their skate scene. Somehow, some way, I found that skateboarding transcends all barriers. I don't really know what it is, but through all the time I've been skating, I've always felt connected to other skaters and welcome in their towns and countries. As individuals, our connection rises above and beyond borders, class status, governments, and philosophical or religious ideologies. It's amazing how skateboarding can knock down walls. It's common ground for so many of us. Traveling around and living this, is one of the most incredible experiences I know. Within the skateboard industry, a lot of people don't get me. They think I'm unapproachable. They mistake my intensity and passion for anger and resentment. 
I think a lot of it has to do with that I don't invest myself in the contests and other social gatherings. I don't interact enough with or subscribe to what the herd is doing, and so I'm set apart. And being set apart can be tough, because people get nervous and intimidated by those they don't have a handle on, and so they need to classify and define them. They say I'm violent or angry when they couldn't be further from the truth. I just don't put a lot of stock in being number one, in being the best or being accepted just for the sake of being accepted. There is no guarantee as to what may go down when I get in front of a crowd and skate. Half the time, I don't even know myself. But the one constant is and has been that I will put on some sort of a show. My trip has always been a solo one. Sometimes by choice, sometimes by force, and sometimes by necessity. I do have a few people I'm close to, but things change, teams change, people come and go, people screw you, and people turn on you. That's okay though. I refuse to be jaded or bitter about it. I just try to be consistent with those I travel with, skate with, and befriend, because that's all I can do. I go to often ignored places for that reason alone. These are the places I want to go. Places where the people are open to what I'm all about and what I'm trying to do. Places where skateboarding isn't jaded or clouded with stagnation. Alaska is that kind of place. Idealistically, it is also an important place in the landscape of my thinking. It's the last true frontier, and that's why I've made a few pilgrimages up there. This was the kind of trip I'd wanted to take for a long time one that wasn't designated or controlled by any certain sponsor, where I could just go with anyone I chose and do whatever I wanted. Traveling with me were friends, Jason Rothmeyer, Josh Rayburn, Christian Svitak, and Jason Adams. Jason Adams is one of the purest skaters I've ever seen, and he skates fast with flow and style. He has a handle on all terrain.
Christian Svitek has impressed me more with his attitude and approach than any other new pro that's come up over the past few years. The guy just loves skating, and there's still an innocence about him, and I like being around him because of that. This was worth coming down just to meet you guys, skate with you guys. Really right, sorry, it. it's not better. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey man, I, I grew up in a town that didn't have this. I didn't have a skate park. I had a parking lot and a parking block. So you guys should uh, really appreciate what you have yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. The skaters in Alaska appreciated us coming up and skating with them. There's an instant brotherhood up there, and that's how I always thought skateboarding should be. Alaskan skaters have it right. Growing up without a skate park or a designated area to ride was tough, but it was also a gift. My skating grew and became more creative out of necessity. I can't imagine that too many young skaters fully realize how lucky they are to have these places, and they shouldn't be taking them for granted. They should maximize the experience and be thankful they have a place to ride. I enjoy coming here and meeting you guys. But for some guys, it's, you know, it's, it's scary, it's stressful. It's like, you know, the spotlight is always on you. So they get a little weirded out. But you guys can learn from those guys, man. If you ever get sponsored, you're ever in the position that they're in, don't, don't be lame to people. That's like the worst thing you can do, man. 
It's your skate park. This is your town. Uh, it's not mine. Exactly. You know, I'm coming in here going, okay, I hope they don't kick me out. <laughs> you know? <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> Pro skater. What's up, Mama TV? <laughs> Thanks. Fuck, you're gonna see the trick. Watch his handstand. Watch his handstand. I get out on the road and participate in the lives of young people because I feel I have a responsibility to pass on the things I've learned. There's nothing I enjoy doing more than spending time talking to and working with them. As soon as you let your weight go, you're gonna fall. You don't have to fall. You can just go up and come back down. It's easy. You can do it. Try it again. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> See that? She's about bending those knees and staying over centered over your board. Speaking of your board. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta tighten these up. I'm not far removed from that 14-year-old zit-faced kid from New Jersey who found skateboarding and was saved by it. I can relate to young people and their needs and their issues, and I found that they are receptive and interested in what I'm saying and in what I'm about because they can see that I really do care. I'm not faking it, and that goes a long way with them. You're going to be a pro skater, boy. <laughs> All right. Hey, anything's possible. Yeah. I'm, from, I'm from a small town in New Jersey, and... Uh, it was pretty much unheard of. I got mm -hmm. sponsored in 1986, and it was unheard of that someone from the East Coast could, mm -hmm. you know, hang with the guys in California. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, all, all across the country right now, you're seeing places like this uh, everywhere, you know? Skateboarding is growing up a little bit. It's more yeah, accepted. It and it's closer to Earth than he's ever been before. I met Ryan Rommel via email when he wrote to me asking for a few banners to hang in his hospital room because he was on his way to Duke University to receive a bone marrow transplant. Ryan is 15 years old and has leukemia. Instead of just putting some stuff in the mail, I decided to go to Florida and visit him. The way I see it is, if my presence could cheer him up and keep him fighting, then I had no other choice but to go. Chemo stinks, man. I bet. Last that last one, but the one before, it, it's so sick. I like, I lost 10 pounds. Really? Throwing up so yeah, much. Yeah, last, last I heard from you, email was that you hadn't been eating or... Yeah, and I went in for to the hospital, get two can. It's like, it looks like milk. Right. And this goes to my port. And that gives you nutrition, so that helped me gain weight. So then, what's the, what's the latest? You have to get, you have to put some weight on, and then you can go to Duke. Yeah, we're going to Duke next Sunday. This oh, Sunday really? coming up. I mean Sunday. Oh, okay. Yeah. And when you go to Duke, that you're gonna get the bone marrow transplant. Maybe? Yeah. My brother is gonna be my daughter. Right really? Here. He's a perfect match. So. Oh. Wow. Perfect match. All right. Our conversation quickly turned to skating, and after rounding up the rest of the neighborhood kids. We went outside to do what brought us together in the first place, skate. Come on, it's very rare that I take requests. Where? Over it? Ooh. Ooh. This may take a couple tries, all right? Oh. 
He can do it. He's Mike, man. Almost 360? Yeah, I can go fuck Alright. Hey, funny, you hit it on the first try. Oh. I thought my board was like this, so I pushed all my weight this way. That's like chin height. <laughs> Johnny, it's over That's your head. You got it right there. I, know. Hey, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Guys. This is a board that I've been sk I skated back in Alaska. Up, everyone. Everyone back up. And I skated in Phoenix and Albuquerque. So I wanted to give you one of the boards I've ridden. It's cool. That's awesome. awesome. <laughs> that looks cool. And then, and then to complement that, you need one of these two. <laughs> oh, oh my God. Dang. Dang. You're lucky. Oh my God. That's three decks. Oh, he has four oh decks now. And since I don't want you to ride that one, I want you to just keep that one. Oh my God. When you get God. better. Oh my goodness, Ryan. Ryan. You're so lucky. You have three Ryan. decks. Right? Let's see. That used to be my old one. Yeah, you know, that reminds me of something, you guys. Make sure, make sure that it's always like this. That you're all there for each other. You know, don't let little things get between you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys gotta, your friendship's what's important. And uh, going out skating with each other, have fun, but don't make it a competition. Don't, don't make it, don't make it not fun. Don't exclude anybody because they're, they can't do a certain trick or they don't have a certain, the right board or the right clothes. If you see other guys that are just starting out, help them out, bring them in. Make them feel, make them feel good. Like don't exclude them. He just started? Yeah. Like this guy. <laughs> and Johnny. And Johnny. Four months ago. Four months? Oh, like three months ago. Yeah, Welcome to the, the club, club, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to stop, man. It was great to meet you. Eric. Joe, thanks for everything. Handshake's nice not good enough, yep. brother. No problem. Thanks for coming, yeah. okay? Thank you. See you, John. See you. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, and we'll be in contact with you, let you know what's going on. I want to know I'll about the new board yeah. and all that. Okay, no, no problem. I'll all be thinking about you guys. We're going to be praying for you while you're on the road. Just making sure you stay oh, safe. That's all coming right back at you guys. Yep, yep. So, we made it a friend for life. Yeah, you know? Going to Ryan's home and meeting him, his friends and family was a gift. I truly felt and feel that God put me there. I learned a lot that day about myself and the power of faith, and it reaffirmed the idea that if you do good, good will come back to you. Meeting Ryan and his family was something good in my life. When I find myself away from the skaters and the skating, away from actually putting the miles down, when it's just me and my broken body, I feel useless and homesick. That's when it gets hard. That's when the road beats me up and pushes me around. But I resolve always to stay strong and get through it because I know the skate scene needs me. As a kid growing up in Edison, New Jersey, I was a dreamer. I spent my days lost in my imagination. I lived in a make-believe world where I was a superhero, where I was Elvis, where I always won the fight and got the girl. I was very introverted and sensitive. I struggled in school with social circles, and with an identity. It wasn't until I found skateboarding that I found myself. The very first time I stepped on a board, I knew my life would be forever changed. Skateboarding was mine, mine to enjoy, to be creative with, and that's what mattered. I suddenly felt in control of my environment and in control of my life. I knew who I was and I was happy just being me. For the first time, I had a sense of purpose, meaning, and direction, and a skateboard gave those things to me. The importance of it can't be understated, because it is the very thing that motivates me now. There is very little innocence left in skateboarding these days, and that's what I'm fighting for, just a little piece of innocence, 
a little piece of sanity. Looking back, I can no longer believe this is where I grew up, that this is the place where all of these great memories in my head took place. And although I no longer have a connection to it, I will always remember who I am and where I come from. But once you have been moved, once you've been inspired, how can you not want to get out there and share it with the rest of the world? I now live in Long Beach, California, with my wife Anne and my daughters Emily and Lucinda. I love skateboarding. I love what I do. But my family is my life. They are everything to me. They make doing the miles and going out into a mostly indifferent world trying to make a difference worthwhile. The best part about traveling is being able to go home. People always associate me as being a man of the road. I'm not and never want to be. A man of the road has no home and doesn't want one. I have a home and a family, and it's my life.
to everyone forging his or her own path in life, I say stand strong. Those are the words I live by. That's my mantra. I offer these words to young skaters everywhere and people of all age, race, creed, and background. The world needs more active, caring, and compassionate participants. Get involved. Make a difference. You can. Thank you.